Hey there everyone, it's Q. Welcome to Holden Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And today we are focusing on one of my favorites. And for some of you, I know it's your favorite too, it's Lightwave. My channel is, well, if this is the first time you've ever come here, my channel mo mostly focuses on the creativity software side of the Amiga computer. As you may know, the Amiga is a brilliant system that uh, offered amazing fun video games, amazing creative music software, amazing creative graphics software, and my particular channel focuses on the 3D creative side. So you, this host of programs you see before you, the Ad Pro, which is Art Department Professional, the VP3, which is Vista Pro 3.0, this is a terrain, terrain generation program. We've got the Forge, which is a uh, 3D procedural program, which basically in the most simplistic terms, it creates and generates 2D images for you using math. And we have Lightwave, which is the full animation, visual effects, you know, Babylon 5, Sequest, space above and beyond type software. Scenery Animator is another landscape 3D program, much like Vista Pro. And TV Paint is basically the Amiga version of Photoshop. Yes, and keep in mind, all of this software is 35 years old, at least, collectively. I mean, every single one of these programs is, is probably between uh, 25 to 35 years old. So this is ancient stuff. So when I, if, you, if you do stick around and watch my video, uh, just keep that in mind. You're looking at software that's 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 30 years old, 35 years old. And I'm running this on an Amiga 1200, which is a Commodore Amiga computer with the AGA graphics chipset. And I'm using a 68060 accelerator, which is a, a Motorola CPU, uh, using the TF1260 module um, manufactured by uh, Jonathan Hertel. And today we're going to cover some fun lightwave stuff and I have got loaded up today is the uh, it's a demo scene that comes on the lightwave content install so if you get a hold of the lightwave content install you can also enjoy this it's actually called let's show you right here uh, TV guy so as you can see I've, I've done a couple of versions already we've got TV guy version 2 TV guy version 3 and I'm skipping over a lot of stuff so if you've never seen this program if you're still watching and you're like what what is this guy showing me I have an entire uh, video series called Lightwave Basic, which covers this program, and so we are we are well we are well into our our I think tenth video now, ninth video. So I'm gonna, I'm not going to be uh, covering a lot of the basics anymore. I'm just kind of moving forward and assuming that uh, you've you, you have some knowledge of 3D software and maybe of Lightwave, or maybe you've actually watched my videos. Great, and I'm going to jump into this. And what I wanted to cover was that. Being that this is 35-year-old software, there was not a lot of uh, options available for lighting back then. We had a spotlight, a point light, a distant light, and an ambient. So an ambient light basically generates light in like a 360-degree method where everything is evenly lit the same, which is great, but that doesn't really do much, right? If everything is lit exactly the same, then... How is that going to look like anything, right? It's just going to look like a bright, bright room. But one of the biggest problems with the, the light wave lighting back then with the ray trace lighting is that if you wanted to get the nice, soft, natural lighting like you see outside, um, you had to use these spotlights with the shadow maps to get your fuzziness, right? This little fuzziness setting, and you have this, this setting here. And there was just, the limitations with this just meant that the, the, the fuzziness was always really kind of, you know, flickery, or it was really expensive and slow, and just wasn't that great. And not, not to mention, that's just, we're just talking about shadows. But then there was like the way the light would actually, you know, cast on a surface. So like my hand is like an object, right? And as the light would cast onto the surface, it would, it would like, for example, right now, look at this. Here's my hand above my other hand, and as you can see, there's like my the shadow of my fingers. So see how we've got like, see how my fingers that are close to my hand right now are. The shadow is like nice and tight, but look over here where my thumb is pointing. Look at the shadow on my wrist. See how that's softer? See that? Okay. Isn't that, isn't that nice? Look at that. Yes. So 
that kind of effect you could not get with the shadow map or the ray trace because you know in order for the shadow map to try and recreate this this effect where you know this shadow with my finger is kind of sharp but the shadow on my wrist is soft the shadow map didn't know how to handle that it would you'd have to it was like it was like an, an emulation of shadows and it would just be this kind of soft fuzzy chunky mess and then the problem with the distant light the 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 the, the quote unquote sunlight with its ray trace shadows is that you would only be able to get this this hard this hard shadow that you see from my fingers on my hand here this hard shadow and well what about the soft shadow that's happening with my wrist over here how do i how do i do that so you could fake that look you could you could emulate that look by using our little light bulbs, our point lights, okay? So these little point lights are our little spherical light bulbs like you might have in your, your ceiling above you right now. And they radiate light out in all directions, like 360 degrees, every direction. So the idea was, well, if you just use one of those, you're just gonna get the same effect you're seeing here, this, this, sh this, sharp, this sharp shadow on my hand that you're seeing. But if you take a bunch of those little tiny lights, those little point lights, and you arrange them in a pattern, like two by four or two by six, right? You're gonna get multiple shadows, multiple 360 lights emitting, and you're gonna get this nice, soft, diffuse look, which means you can get both of these type of shadow effects that I've been showing you with my creepy forearms. So the first thing we're, we're going to do is make sure all our other lights are off. Okay, so here we go. We got our ambient intensity is to zero. There's only one light. It's a point light and it's ray traced. So ray trace means it's going to have those sharp shadows. We're going to go to the top view. We're going to edit light so we can see our light is way over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is move this light over into our scene. Okay, I'm gonna put it right over, right over the TV, okay? And I'm gonna to go to the side view, and what happened? I don't even, where, where's the light at? Well, let's go to our view, and let's say view, zoom. We're gonna zoom out. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Look up here, there's our light. Let me click back on light. We can see our light is way up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it down. And I'm not, I'm not gonna, um, by the way, I'm not uh, gonna tell you what I'm doing with hotkeys or what I'm doing with my mouse. I have covered that in previous videos. So if you wanna know what I'm doing with the mouse or the hotkeys, I've covered that in previous videos. This is, this is uh, just me doing my thing, right? So I've moved that light down. I'm gonna go back to view and I'm gonna zoom us back in so I can see a little better, better what's going on here. I'm gonna click move. And one of the things I'm going to do right now is take us back to the camera view and we're going to look at this and go, okay, so there's our scene. Q has moved that light and now I'm going to press F9. I know I said, I know I told you I wasn't going to call out hotkeys, but I'm going to say some of the hotkeys because it's just habit. So I'm pressing F9 and I am going to be editing this video, so I'm not going to make you wait for a lot of things. So if you see the video jump around in time, that's because I've gone ahead and made a, made, a, made a little snippet. But as you can see, I've got one light and we have our TV set with its ancient archaic antenna here. We have our little, little couch here and our little dresser drawers and some toys, the walls and the painting. But it looks kind of, um, I don't know, there's like no, you know, I, I, was, I spent all that time showing you shadows with my, my chubby hands here. But we don't really see any of those shadows on the ground, do we? It's like, what's, what's, what's going on here? So let's go back to the light and confirm that the light has shadow type. Ray trace is on. Okay, let's go to camera. Uh-oh, whoops. Ray trace shadows was turned off. Well, we're gonna to have to turn that on now, aren't we? So let's turn that on, hit continue, and let's press F9 again. Aha, so now you're starting to see what I was talking about with my little my little hand, uh, hand thing I was doing. So you can see how we've got these like hard, hard shadows, right? We have one light, hard shadow. And the lighting on the surfaces here, like the top of this TV is just kind of this it's like brown, but then the side is just black. And the, this couch here is lit up, but then it kind of, yeah, it's just, 
It's very harsh and stark, right? Is we can add some fall off. So what we're gonna do to do fall off, we're gonna go back to our side view. And we know that one of these little, see these right here? See these little gray lines here? Let me go to the top view. Every one of these little squares, okay, is, show you here, is one unit, okay? So if one of these squares is one unit, we go back to our side view, you can see here, here's one unit, right? From here to here. You, you, I know this is gonna be difficult, but you gotta kind of figure, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a very rough guesstimate. I am just estimating what I think a unit is. I mean, if you look at my, my, my little chubby finger here, it fits right between one of those units. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm seeing six units. So for this intensity fall off, just to, just to give us a starting value, I'm gonna do six. And then I'm gonna press F9 again. And now what you're gonna see is instead of the, the, the bright, harsh overall lighting, you're gonna see a much more reduced lighting. Let me, just, let me do this so you can actually see what I'm doing here. You're gonna start really bright up here with your light value, and then you're gonna fall off and the light value is gonna go down, 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 down. So the light starts up here and it goes down, 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 down. That's what this maximum range does. So obviously my maximum range was far, far too aggressive because there was almost no light in that scene. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna increase it. In fact, we're gonna double it to 12. And let's press F9 again. And now look what's already happened. Versus the original image, now you can always rewind the video, but you can already see now, instead of this kind of like stark, everything is just illuminated with the same level of light, we're now getting this kind of fall off effect, which is, that's nice. It's a little more natural, a little more like real lighting, okay? So now that we, we saw that render, we were getting the nice kind of fall off uh, look of the shadows. Let's go ahead and increase that a little more and I've turned on the ray trace reflections option. So now we're, we should see the room be a little brighter. Okay, well, whoa, a bunch of things have changed. So I turned on ray trace reflections and now the side of the TV set is like transparent. Are we, are we seeing through it? No, you're not seeing through it. What you're seeing is the reflection of the wall that, that's behind the camera. You can't see it because the wall is behind the camera, but it's reflecting on the side of this television set, okay? Now, granted, this is looking much better than what we started with. And again, rewind the video if you want to remember what this looked like when we first started. But one of the things we haven't addressed are these these, these hard shadows, right? Let's go ahead and figure out what we're going to do with this uh, hard shadow issue. So to do the hard shadow issue, we're going to go to lights and we're gonna clone. And we're gonna make six. Actually, I'm sorry, we're gonna make five, because I want six total. And then we're gonna to go to the top view. So I've got six of these lights, but they're all stacked on top of each other because they are clones of each other. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to object. I'm sorry, I'm using my Amiga mouse, so it's a little, little flaky. We're gonna say add a null. All a null object is, okay, by the way, is it's, it's, it's something that doesn't render. It's a thing to allow you to control things in your, in your scene, but it does not render. So I can, I, can, I can attach things to it, I can target things towards it, but it doesn't actually show up in my render. So now that we have this null, what are we gonna do with this null? Well, I'm going to take every single one of these lights, all six of them, and I'm gonna parent them to that null. There's the first light parented to the null, go to the second light, parent to the null, and so on. Okay, so I've now parented all of those lights to that null. The next thing I'm gonna do is click on view and I'm gonna zoom in because what I need to do, this is gonna require some finesse. I need to now go back to my lights and I'm gonna go back to light one and I am, and light one is parented to that null, okay? So it's it's sitting right here, so parent, null. So I'm gonna go to light two, and I'm going to now move light two 
up here. When I'm, tr what I'm, what I'm doing here, when I'm doing this is I'm moving, I'm going to move these lights to form an array, kind of an array of lights. All right. So that's the next step. All right, so I've completed moving all the lights into this array. As you can see here, they're all kind of scattered into this little array. I parented all of those lights to that null so that I can go back to that null and now I can move these lights together as a group. So I don't have to move them individually now, I can move them as a group. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick them between the TV and the sofa. We're gonna go back to our camera view and I'm going to go ahead and increase the resolution to low res so we can better see the, the effect of the, uh, the shadows on the ground and press F9. This is going to take a little longer, so we're probably going to fast forward through this. All right, so look at that. Whoa. So this looks a lot different, doesn't it? First off, look how bright the room is. So we obviously need to turn those lights down. But if you look down at the shadows, what are you seeing? You're seeing this nice, soft shadow. And now we're getting a much more graduated, smoother shading on the sofa here. Not so much on the TV because, well, let's face it, the TV is a box. And, you know, it has these hard angles on it, so there's, that's not going to do much for us. But if you look at the shadow down here on the ground, it's a lot softer. In fact, let me, uh, let me go ahead and jiggle the camera for you. So as you can see, we're dealing with a much... A much smoother shadow here and you can even see it's even fading out there and you know what's really nice about this 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 effect of the uh, camera or the camera of the of, of my camera zooming out on you while I'm trying to talk to you uh, no the effect of the light doing what it's doing there is that it's giving you that soft faded more natural looking light effect right so you can get soft shadows with a shadow map but the problem is it'll flicker or shimmer unless you increase the memory. And the problem with that is when you increase the memory of the shadow map, you're going to run out of memory. I'm trying to think of a good um, analogy. It's like shadow map lights in Lightwave are kind of like using images to use to make shadows, right? And images eat up memory. Ray tracing and procedural textures use math. Math does use up memory, but it doesn't use up anywhere near as much memory. But it is slower because it has to use math. So while shadow map lights can give you soft shadows, they use up more memory. So if your Amiga doesn't have a lot of memory and you have patience, you can do this trick to get soft shadows and not worry about having to eat up a bunch of memory. Shadow maps, despite how cool they can, they can be, they, like I said, they tend to flicker and shimmer, whereas this will not flicker and shimmer because it's a ray trace light. And you'll get this nice soft contact shadow. Something the shadow map can't do is you're gonna get this nice shading across the items in your scene too. So it's not just the shadow, it's the items in your scene. Now, admittedly, this is really, really, really bright. So what we need to do is go to every single one of these lights and lower their intensity. Okay, so they're all at 70%. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna lower their intensity. All right, so I've lowered their intensity. And one of the things I wanna point out, what else could I do? I could change their color. I could make every single one of these lights a slightly different color, which will help add to the, the, the variation of shading in the scene. Now, you could make each light a subtle different value of white, right? So you've got like a, a cool white, a warm white, and you can mix it those up. And when you mix those up, that'll help add to the realism of the light uh, shading in your scene. I'm not gonna do that right now, but I'm just saying that's one of the things you could do. So now I've lowered those light values. Let's go ahead and fire off another render. And there we go, look at that. So now we've got some of the bright lights taken down. We're, we're still a little bright up here. I mean, this looks pretty intense, but we still, now we're getting back some of the fall off. But again, now you can even see the shadows a little better. And if you look at like the, the green ball down here, it's got some better better shading going on happening with it. We've got the the blue here happening. I mean, this is, this is nice. And look, and it's probably hard to see on, on here unless you like squint, but there's nice subtle shadowing from the antenna effect here. 
And again, remember, this is 35 year old software. So uh, please keep the laughter to a minimum. I do realize uh, we, we can do much more in with modern software, but this is, I'm showing you what we could do back then. Uh, and, and this is one of the cool modern tricks. So I think this concludes this video. I, I've shown you how to create a light array using ray trace lights, point lights specifically, to uh, simulate the soft shadow effect without having to uh, expend precious memory using shadow maps. Shadow maps are only available when using a spotlight. And right here where it says shadow map size, this is the memory. So this one light is right now, it's set to use 512K of memory. So you Amiga guys understand, that's a lot of memory for an Amiga. So I can get a soft shadow from one light, but it's gonna take 512K memory. Does that look soft enough for me? And you got your shadow fuzziness here. I mean, if it, if it doesn't, then you gotta increase it. Like if it, if, it, if it starts to get, like I said, if it starts to get too chattery or flickery, you have to increase this amount. That's more memory. Well, if you use my technique, well, it's not my technique, it's the common technique of, of the era. If you stick to the point light that's ray traced and you use this array of lights, of these, like these, these, these lights here, you, you get this amazing soft effect of the shadows and this diffuse lighting effect in your scene, and it doesn't use any memory because it's using math. And you, as you may have figured out by now, if you add more lights, like if you add another row of three here, you're gonna get even more soft coverage. So that's the uh, soft point light guide. I, ho I hope you enjoy watching these videos. I really do. They're, my lightweight videos are the ones I like doing the most. I know everyone tunes in uh, for the, the hardware videos because those are fun too. I do get a kick out of those, but I really do love this stuff. This is my uh, this is my Amiga retro nerd out stuff, and I um, I just get a kick out of it. And I, I really appreciate all of you that enjoy these videos too. And I, I really hope this video helped you understand how to do this. And again, you can always rewind the video to decode what I'm trying to say because I'm terrible at this. Because again, this is the most underproduced, poorly produced Amiga channel on YouTube. Thanks for watching.